In this video, you're going to learn how to solve quadratic equations by completing the square. And we're going to talk about all the steps that you're going to need to do to do this process. We're going to go through two examples, one easier one, one slightly more challenging. So let's dive in. So the first one, we've got x squared minus 4x plus 2 equals 0. So following these steps, you might want to take a screenshot or write these down. The first step, I like to think about it as moving the constant to the other side of the equation. What do I mean by that? Well, the constant's just the number. So we want to get this to the other side, basically just to get it out of the way. So we're going to subtract 2 from both sides. And so that gives us x squared minus 4x equals negative 2. Okay, now step number 2, you want to divide everything by the leading coefficient, or you can think of it as the a value, like ax squared, the number that comes in front of the x squared term. In this case, you can see this is understood to be a 1. If I divide everything by 1, it's going to be itself. So I really don't need to do that in this particular problem, but it, we'll do it in the next one. For step number 3 now, you want to figure out what b divided by 2, the quantity squared is, and add that to both sides. This is uh, a key step in completing the square. So the b value is the number that comes in front of x. Okay, so we're going to say, hmm, half of negative 4, or you could say negative 4 divided by 2. Let's do it over here on the side. Sometimes that helps. Squared. So negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4. And so what we're going to do is we're going to add 4 to the left side of the equation and the right side of the equation to keep it balanced. We don't want to change the equation. We just want to change the way that it looks. Now for step number 4, we want to factor the perfect square trinomial that we created on the left side here of the equation. And when you do this, just a little hint, it's going to be a perfect square, a binomial squared, and it's always going to be half of this b value. So if this was plus 4, I would write plus 2. Since it's minus 4, I'm going to write minus 2. Always half of that b value. And over here, negative 2 plus 4 is 2. So now we've completed the square, but we want to solve it by taking the square root of both sides. And remember, when you take the square root of both sides of the equation, you get two answers, plus or minus, positive or negative. So let's go ahead and do that now. We're going to take the square root of the left side, square to the right side. The square and the square root, they undo one another. So we're left with x minus 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 2. Now, a lot of teachers will have you do the step number 6 about splitting it into two equations and then solving. And the way you would do that is you would write one equation where x minus 2 is equal to positive square root of 2 and another equation where x minus 2 is equal to negative square root of 2. And then all you have to do now is solve. So I'm going to add 2 to both sides. Add 2 to both sides. And we get x is equal to 2 plus square root of 2 and 2 minus square root of 2. And those are your two solutions. Now, a little shortcut if you're interested is you could add this 2, but just make sure you put it in front of the plus or minus sign. So there would be a positive 2 plus or minus root 2. A little bit quicker, but a lot of times teachers will have you split it. Let's look at another example. Okay, for number 2 now, we've got 3x squared minus 24x plus 9 is equal to 0. Keep in mind that this is in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. Okay, so when we talk about our a and b uh, and c, that's what we're referring to. So let's go through the steps. If you want to pause the video and try this on your own, you can definitely do that. It says move the constant to the other side of the equation. The constant is the c value right here. It's just this number. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to subtract 9 from both sides to keep the equation balanced. And so we're left here on the left with 3x squared minus 24x equals negative 9. Okay, so now step number 2, we want to divide everything by the leading coefficient or the a value. That's the number that comes in front of the x squared term. So if we divide everything by 3, we're keeping the equation balanced because we're doing it to both sides. This is going to give us x squared minus 8x is equal to negative 3. Now number 3, we take half of the b value squared, or you can think of it as b divided by 2, the quantity squared, and we're going to add it to both sides to keep the equation balanced. So the b is the number that comes in front of the x here. That's negative 8. And so let's do the work over here on the side. Negative 8 divided by 2 squared. Well, that's negative 4. Negative 4 squared is a positive 16. And we're going to add 16 to the left side and the right side. Now we're going to go to step number 4. We're going to factor the perfect square trinomial that we ourselves created here 
okay, by completing the square. And the way that that factors, remember, it's always going to be half of this b value. So this is going to be minus 4, x minus 4, the quantity squared. If it was plus 8, it would be plus 4. You can check your work if you take this binomial and you multiply it by itself. So x minus 4 times x minus 4 would give you back the quantity here. Okay, and this is equal to 13. Now, we're going to take the square root of both sides, remembering the plus or minus, to solve it. So if we take the square to the left, we want to take the square to the right. Again, remember we get two answers, plus or minus. Square root of 13, the square and the square root undo one another. And now all we have to do is split this into two equations and solve, step number six. Or if you want to use my shortcut, you can add four. Just make sure you add the four in front of the plus or minus, because it's not really plus or minus square root of 13 plus four. It's four plus root 13 and four minus root 13. So that would be our final uh, two solutions. If you want to get a decimal, you can do this on your calculator and then combine them together. This is an exact answer. If you like the way that I explain things and you want to see more about completing the square, follow me over to that video I did right there. We'll get some more practice. You can test yourself and I'll see you over in that video.